folks. Well, I'm back with you again concerning the Bible version Secrets Exposed by Jack McElroy. And we jump right into um, to the NIV section here. I thought I was going to read another part of it, but that, I think I already covered most of that in another area right when I was doing the introduction. But anyway, it says the New International Version, a gender neutral inaccurate version. Introduction in the NIV section. NIV was a game changer. It was the darling of the evangelicals since the New Testament first came out on the scene in 1973. The complete Bible was introduced in 1978, then revised in 1984 and 2011. They liked it for its readability, however the readability asset was the offset by liability. Problem 1, Accuracy versus Readability. The NIV sacrifices accuracy for the sake of readability because of the nature of its translation. The problem is that although the Bible is meant to be read, it also is meant to be studied. Bible researcher Michael D. Marlowe, and I'm finding out more and more. I read through the Bible. This is my seventh time reading through the Bible, but there are things in the Bible that just need to be studied. Because that's what Paul says, study to show thyself approved. Workmen that need not to be ashamed, write the divine word of God. Um, instead of me just reading it, I still need to study it more and more. Uh, Michael DeMarlo, B.S. English Literature, M.A. Pittsburgh Theological Seminary, who is theological conservative reform and not King James only, says there are some criticism of the there was some criticism of the NIV from conservatives who objected to the non-literal method of the translation in general. The moderate use of the so-called dynamic equivalence method of translation in the version involved a trade-off in which accuracy was sometimes sacrificed for the sake of readability. As Daniel Wallace of Dallas Theological Seminary observed, readability seems to have been a higher priority than anything else in the making of the NIV. What's the big deal, you ask? Problem one led to problem two, political correctness. The readability gamut opens the door to all kinds of mischief. The main one that caught the attention of evangelicals is political correctness in the form of gender neutrality. And as you'll see by some of the quotes, another is patriarchy which is another term banned by, about by today's social justice warriors. Marlow continues, the inclusive language edition in 1996. Um, the appearance of this edition of the NIV in Great Britain provoked indignation among conservatives who were using the NIV. A statement in the preface that the translators believed it was often appropriate to mute patriar patriarchalism what that means. Of the culture of the I'm not gonna look it up on that. Of the culture of the culture of the biblical writers through gender inclusive language when this could be done without compromising the message of the spirit, page seven, was hard enough to reconcile with conservative views of the Bible's verbal inspiration. The whole affair raised suspicions of liberal tendencies in the International Bible Society. They were scared of liberal tendencies. Liberal tendencies in a Bible translation? Who's doing what? What's their agenda? I thought translations were done by good, godly folks who had no agenda, but let's dig deeper. But when it's plans for replacing the current NIV in America with inclusive language, revision became known in 1997. Strong opposition arose among evangelical leaders. The pressure to abandon their plan Revision was such that four of the men who were responsible for it went so far as to sign a document. The Colorado Springs guidelines positively stated that they had dropped all intention of producing or publishing any such version. On the same day, the International Bible Society also issued a statement in which it promised that it would continue to publish the NIV unchanged. But soon afterwards, the IBS apparently reevaluated the situation and proceeded with a revision as if its officers had never signed the Colorado Springs guidelines. 
Embarrassed and under heavy pressure from conservative groups, the IBS in 1997 announced that an inclusive language edition would not be published in America under the name New International Version, and that it would be in the future continue to and it would in the, in the future continue to publish the NIV of 1984 unchanged. Ah, uh, promises, promises. But as time went on, they just had to fit the changing culture, so they published today's new international version of 2005. Well, I'm going to stop right there. Like I said, I thought I was going to do pretty good on the video last night. They kept cutting things out, so I'm just going to go about five or six minutes. If I'm at my mom's house and I have Wi-Fi, I'll do something like that, a little more lengthy ones. Thanks for watching. Bye.